Here's some fake data for an IEB physics internal assessment, a lab report. I have my independent variable. At each area value, I recorded the dependent variable three times, three repetitions, and I averaged those three together to get this number. And of course, when we take an average, there is uncertainty. And the way I'm calculating the uncertainty is by finding the biggest of the three, subtracting the smallest of the three, and dividing that numerator, that range, by two. I've done this using the functions max and min. Those are great because then Excel picks out the biggest and the smallest, and it makes it easy to copy this formula to the cells below. So we made a raw data graph. And the first thing we want to evaluate is, does this graph have any curvature? Is it linear? To help figure that out, let's zoom in. We have a lot of white space down here. I'm going to double click on the numbers and set the minimum to, how about 150? I hit enter next on my keyboard. That's better. This seems to have some curvature. And a lot of the variety, there are many graphs that curve, many functions that curve, but many of those fall under the category of a power function. So that's a logical place to start. See whether your data fits a power function or follows a power function. We're trying to figure out the trend. We're trying to develop an equation from the data. OK, so to figure out whether you have a power function, you do a log-log analysis. You log all of your x's, your independent variable, you log all of the y's, the dependent variable, and I'm, I'm logging the average of the three trials. And you do this for each of your data points. Then you make a graph of log versus log. That's what this is. Now, again, the way that we figure out whether there's anything conclusive is we look for a straight line. Does this graph form a straight line? Again, let's zoom in to help evaluate whether or not it's straight. I'll double click on the number, the numbers down here, and then I make sure I'm on the three, and I set the maximum. Let's make the maximum 1.5, and then I hit enter. OK, careful here. If you had gone ahead and added a trend line, it might look straight, and you might be fooled. But if you take that trend line away, we can see that there is clear curvature. The graph is kind of curving up here. Right? That's not good. If your log-log graph is not straight, you cannot draw a conclusion. In fact, the conclusion would be you don't have this type of a power function. But it really looks like there should be a power function. In fact, I created this data using a power function. Here it is. <laughs> so I know there's a power function. Why is the log-log analysis failing? Why has it not given us the correct result? The answer is because your data has a y-intercept. If you follow this trend back, and this is the kind of thing you would discuss in your report, if you follow this trend back, it's going to hit the y-axis at, I don't know, maybe 200. It seems to be going, It's it's uh, the slope is pretty steep here at the beginning. So when we approach the beginning, it's going to kind of drop off. And let's say it's 200, the intercept. This is the form you have right here. That's the form of your graph. And the y-intercept disrupts the log-log analysis. So you can't get reliable results until you remove the y-intercept. How do you remove the y-intercept from your data? We are going to estimate the intercept to be 200. And then we'll shift every data point down by that amount. Now, I'm not going to go changing my values here. I'm not going to mess up my actual raw data. Instead, I will come in to my formula here, and I will do log of f4 minus 200. And I'm justifying my the 200 value here, because that's where I think my graph would have a y-intercept. That's where it would hit the y-axis. I hit Enter. I copy these down. And let's zoom in to see if that's straighter. I double click. I'll make my minimum, how about 1.3. And now we evaluate. Is this graph straight? It sure looks straight to me. 
We don't have that upward curvature that there was before. We don't have that uh, any downward curvature. Yeah, there's random fluctuation, but it's straight. That means a few important things. If your log-log graph is straight, then you have confirmed that you have a power function. You just have it with a y-intercept. Once you think your graph is straight, it would be appropriate now to add a linear trend line. You would want to click the arrow here and then more options. Once you know that it's straight, we can add our equation. And only at this stage, once we believe it's straight visually, at that stage, it would be appropriate to add an r-squared value if you want to use the r-squared value. So what's the value? What's the purpose of this? We already discussed that we know we have a power function. But there's a second thing we get from our log-log graph. This, the power n is equal to the slope of your straight log-log graph. So where's the slope? The slope is the coefficient to x. And so 0 0.5086, that is the power n. Now, would you leave it as 0 0.5086? No. We are physicists. And so we say, hang on, that rounds to 0.5, which is the same as square rooting. Square rooting is something we do a lot in physics. So let's take this, and we are going to now choose as the function, as the power rather, 0.5. That's what we get from our log-log graph. We figured out the power. But we have to figure out the rest of the function, like the constant k and the y-intercept. To do that, let's use what we've just learned. If x is raised to the 0.5, let's take our x values, the area, the independent variable, and raise it to the 0.5. In other words, we're following the same steps of a normal log-log analysis. So let's fill in these columns. Here I have to take my a value and square root it or raise it to the 0.5. I copy that down. These are the values I already averaged. They're just the average times from before. And I'm going to click equals and then select the cell with the average. And I'll copy that down as well. And I need to go to home and make sure it's rounded to the correct number of decimal places. So we're going to make a graph with this on the x. We've modified the x-axis, just like our power says to. This will be our y. It's the same y-axis as the raw data graph. So the uncertainties are the same. Let me copy those down. And I can click home and make sure they have the correct number of decimal places. One sig fig for absolute uncertainty. Now we have to find the absolute uncertainty in each of these values. Because after all, they come from measurements, which are uncertain. So let's say the uncertainty, the absolute uncertainty in each area is plus or minus, plus or minus 0.7. How do you change that into an absolute uncertainty in the square root of area? Well, we have a rule that says, get the percentage uncertainty in this number. So what's the percent uncertainty? It'd be 0.7 over the value, 1.5. Multiply that percentage uncertainty by the exponent, which is a half in our case, because we're square rooting. Now you have the percentage uncertainty in the square root of x, or the square root of area. So multiply the percentage, I've hit, added a star, multiply the percentage by the measurement of area to the 0.5. Hit enter. Let's drag that down. And now we have to make sure our absolute uncertainty has one sig fig. So I will round these differently, which is fine to do. And then I have to make sure the measurements have the same precision, round them to the same place. There we go, whoops, right there. Okay, that's how we create all the data that will go into our final function graph. Now I'm going to click on the white space here with my mouse, then I hit control. Still holding control, I let go of my mouse. And I'm going to move these down because I'm out of space. And here will be my final function graph. 
this is where I'll find out what is the full and complete function that describes my data. So I'm going to click on one of the data points. Then I can get that four arrow icon and move this over to what I want on the x-axis, which is this. My y-axis is actually the same, the times, but I can move that too. And then I would double click on the error bars right, to pull up more options. Let's try that again. I'd go to the three bars. My horizontal error bars, that's area to the 0.5. I have to fix my axis label. But the area to the 0.5 has uncertainty. I'm going to click down here on custom, specify value. I highlight here for positive and negative because it's plus or minus the uncertainty. And I hit OK. Then uh, my vertical error bars are already fine. If I go to specify value, it's using this correct absolute uncertainty. OK. This is my final function. Let me, and look, it's straight. Hey, let me hit the plus, add a trend line because I think it's straight and show the equation, so more options. And if you want to you know, use the R squared value as part of your analysis, you can add that number in as well. So this is my final function. If I were working in my, uh, my Word document, I would change Y to area. I would change X. No, this is not area, this is area to the 0.5. Let me Control shift plus is the uh, shortcut on the keyboard. When you're in a graph, you can use that to add superscript. So this is area. My y-axis, wait, this was y. My y-axis is time. I'm all over the place here. My x-axis is area to the 0.5. And now I need to add units to these numbers here. Um, first of all, I'm probably going to round this. So let me go ahead and do that. Um, and what's the unit? Well, slope is y over x. So that's seconds over centimeters, or seconds centimeters to the negative one. This is probably going to get rounded, but I wouldn't really round it. I wouldn't round this one point, the 199 until I had figured out my uncertainties, which is another video. Um, that is the y-intercept, so it's a y-value. Its unit then would be seconds. And you wouldn't actually change this like I've just done. Uh, you wouldn't change it on the graph. Instead, you would really just change it in your Word document uh, when you were writing up your report. But this is my final function. My research question, and in the case of many of us, the research question asks how does area impact time? Or how does the independent variable impact the dependent variable? And our answer is a mathematical equation relating those variables. This is the answer to my research question. It deserves some attention. We should compare it to relevant physics. We should talk about the uncertainty in the slope, right? All of those things become really important. You know, we calculate percentage differences to evaluate, you know, how good is this function at predicting my experimental data. Um, so we do all sorts of important things with this function because it directly answers our question. We talk about uns uh, error, you know, random and systematic errors. You know, so this 200 seconds, for example, maybe that's an indication of systematic error, and I need to address where it came from, what introduced it into my experiment. So um, this is how you perform a log-log analysis when you have a y-intercept, and this is the type of procedure that will result in a proper final function and allow us to modify the log-log uh, the analysis. Thanks for watching.